it's not clickbait. This really did happen. Let's get to the video first and I'll tell you what happened. Hey, good people. What do you do when you have the day off? Well, you go flying. Ruskin fly, let's go. All right, so before I go, gonna make a nice cross country out to St. Mary's Airport. Um, I'll show you that where it is on the map. Um, so this is gonna be a nice flight. It's gonna include a fuel stop. So this is what I consider a, a serious cross country. Um, and so before I go, you know, I always wanna give some subscriber shout outs. So I wanna give a subscriber shout out to RC Crazy 30 and RJ Red 14. Thank you both for subscribing to the channel. It really means a lot. Uh, I never take any subscriber for granted and I really appreciate the support. All right, so I'm gonna get myself situated here. Gonna do a run up and we're gonna get on out of here to St. Mary's and uh, should be a great flight. About two hours or so. I'm gonna have like probably like a 14 knot headwind. So definitely gonna take some time. So let's get this party started. Good prop. Master on. Check, check, ooh. Ow. Check, 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 woo. Lord have mercy. Check, one, two, one, two, one, two. All right, that's good. All right, so just waiting for my avionics to come up. Okay, so, all right, so we got that in. Now, what I want to do, let's see. Zero, four. Okay, cool. All right, so, calm um, one. So when I switch, switch. Get to the altitude. Right. Okay, all right, so, all right, so flaps are up. Radio, we got that. Transponder is 1200. All right, let's check our brakes. Good. All right, so I know people are looking at the thumbnail and thinking this is total clickbait for the thumbnail and title. And I gotta tell you, it is not. This flight starts off like any other. Um, it starts off as a normal flight. The Everything seems to be work in working order. You see me working the comms. I'm going through my checklist. Everything is fine. Oil temp, oil pressure all look good um but i gotta tell you this thing turns in a big way so please don't think that that title and thumbnail is clickbait it is not all right right mag two clicks right mag is good back to both left mag one click left mag is good back to both car heat RP is good. Alternator check. Alternator check is good. Suction, oil temp, oil pressure all look good. And idle check. Okay, so you saw the run up. Now I want you to listen to the weather because this is key too. And I want you to listen for a few key things. One, I want you to listen to the sky conditions and I want you to pay particular attention to temperature dew point spread. Doylestown Airport. Automated weather observation 1410 Zulu. Wind 010 at 06. Visibility 10. Sky condition clear. Temperature 08 Celsius. Dew point minus 04 Celsius. Altimeter 3046. Remarks. Three zero. The altitude three minus zero. Okay, so normally I would cut all of that out. I mean, you've seen run one run up and you listen to the weather, you know, all the same. But I know I would get questions about, did you do a run up? Did you see anything during the run up? No. You can see the bags were performing. The um, carb heat, I saw the requisite drop. Everything was cool. And the weather was key because... The temperature dew point spread 
was quite wide. The temperature, if you didn't catch it, was 08 Celsius and the dew point was minus 04 Celsius. So a nice spread. And all my pilot peeps will know why that is important because there's gonna be an ultimate question. Could it have been, and you already know what it, what, what the fill in the blank is, and I don't think so at all. And you know, you will see why that is as this flight develops. All right, so we're on our way, gonna go uh, runway five. That's what the winds are favoring. All right, so on my way to St. Mary's gonna be nice, nice long flight. For takeoff, cabin and doors are locked. Engine gauges are normal. I checked my fuel. It's sufficient. Instruments are set. Uh, controls, that one's up, that one's down. That one's up, that one's down. All free and correct. And rudder is good. Elevator trim is set for takeoff. Flaps are up. Mixture is going to be full pitch. Carb heat is on. Full valve is on. Transponder is on. Throttle friction is where I want it. All right, let's turn our landing light and on. I'm going to check our traffic. I don't see anyone on the field and one on final. And so we're going to get on out here. We will be departing um, one way five. We'll be going out to the Northwest. Doylestown traffic, Cessna 94006, departing runway five out to the Northwest Doylestown. So this is something I would normally cut out as well. All of my pre um, takeoff procedures. But again, I don't want to leave right. any doubt as to whether or not I did all that I that shift could on me again? in terms of being tight with my procedures before I took this flight. There was nothing out of the ordinary. I did nothing different from what I would have done from any other flight. All right, lined up. Let me see. I see 05, 05, 3, 4, 5. All right, heels to the floor, full power. All right, engine instruments in the green. Oil temp, oil pressure, suction all look good. Airspeed is alive. And rotate. So as you can see, normal takeoff. Everything was in order and uh, she's performing beautifully. It is a little choppy. Watch your airspeed. Watch your airspeed. Get that nose down. There you go. Trim right there. Going up to four five. And so I've decided to go up to four thousand five hundred feet. I thought that would be a good altitude. Um, and boy, was I glad I did. All right, we are on. On our way to St. Mary's. Little choppy. Clear though. It's a little bumpy. You can see I'm getting pushed around a little bit. <laughs> Doylestown traffic, Cessna 94006, right crosswind turn out to the northwest. Last call, Doylestown. Okay, so as I make my turn out to the northwest, I want you to look out the window here. And you can see, oh man, little bumpy little choppy but man it was a clear blue sky I mean the visibility was amazing um, and just these high cirrus clouds in the sky nothing really serious at all all right she's moved out all right so on our way out to St. Mary's an airport I've never been to before but um, we'll be doing some flying there so I wanted to get out there and see what it was like to get out there and land and uh, they have two runways, runway 10 and runway 8. And so, yeah, so on my way out, uh, I'm going to head up to 4,500. I was going to go 6.5, but there's more of a headwind at 6.5, so it would take me even longer. So I figured I will just stay at 4.5, have a little less than, a, you know, less headwind there. So at 2, climbing on out, 500 feet a minute. So as you can see, I'm back in the 152. 
Um, <laughs> you know, we're not going anywhere fast. I think, what am I doing? Ground speed 80. <laughs> uh, so, too funny. But the whole point is, you know, building time, getting more experience. And so, you know, not really in a rush. Um, but, yeah, it is funny. Uh, so, I'm not mad at this little 152. She is so easy to fly. Very forgiving. So climb checklist, we're checking our instruments, oil temp, oil pressure, all look good in the green. We're climbing out. The taxi landing light comes off. And we're just checking our instruments. I got three three. Skyman in traffic, Skyhawk 213 Whiskey. That three two. Final runway two five. Three two, we all climbing. look good. And you can see we're climbing out. Climbing out nicely. And so this is showing me my vertical speed. So I'm climbing out about 600, and this is the altitude. So got about another 1,500 feet to go, and then we'll cruise her on out. This is the reason why, so if you look out there, you can see it's clear. And this is the reason why I decided to fly today. You know, I usually don't just kind of fly at the last minute because I like to get my mind right. But, you know, I, you know, I prayed, so that was the first thing I did. But the weather, the winds, everything looks good. Um, and so, and the plane is in good working order. I've got plenty of fuel. So it just made sense to make this, uh, this, this first run. So anyway, we are just sitting back. I'm just climbing out, uh, trying to get my cruise altitude. And so right now, everything that you've seen has happened in real time. I've done very little editing. I may have taken out a few seconds here or there uh, just to get rid of like blank spots and whatnot um, and then a couple places where like the camera got glitchy but for the most part you have seen you know everything that is happening um, in real time um, so nothing is happening everything is good and um, I'm gonna jump to a part where you can see I'm just having a great old time and just settling in for a nice two-hour flight so the one thing that's really crazy about general aviation, there's airports all over the place. I mean, you know, when you fly commercially, you always just think of, you know, the big, the big commercial airports and stuff. But general aviation, I mean, the thing that's so beautiful is that you can go to so many different airports and, you know, see so many different places. I've never had the opportunity to go to an airport and get a crew car or whatever, but Sometimes they have these things called crew cars, which I think are free. Um, maybe you have to get fuel or something like that. I don't know. Um, but, you know, as long as you're in the local area, they allow you to, you know, fly in their crew car. And it's pretty awesome. All right, let's cruise her out. So cruise, flaps are zero, power set, 75, and then lean. So we're above 3,000 feet, so I am going to lean her out. And yes, yeah, so there's a little placard inside the airplane that says if you're above 3,000, that's when you should lean. Anything below, don't lean. Well, I'm at 4.5, so the checklist calls, calls for me to lean, and I'm above 3,000 feet. And so while I'm leaning, just want to let you know I have, that's what I'm doing. I'm leaning the plane out. So just to show that I'm going through everything by the book as I normally would. All right, so everything is looking good. Oil temp, oil pressure, all look good. Suction, we are good. All right, so this is this is really coming in nicely. And as you can see, look out there. I mean, the the visibility is just spectacular. And just look all around out there. And you see all of those. I think those are like warehouses and stuff. So see all the trucks off to the right there those trailers so yeah i mean it's just it's so beautiful and again i'm showing you all of this just so you can see how much i was enjoying this flight and just how amazing the flight was all right let's do a little bit of cabin heat here little chilly on the brother's skin so if you see me doing a lot of the scanning i'm just constantly looking at everything to make sure everything is cool. One of the things I really wanted to focus on on this flight was really paying attention to the engine sound. Because one of the things that I still struggle with is straight and level flight. And one of the things that I've figured out is that if I listen to the cadence of the engine, 
sometimes I can determine whether or not I'm climbing or descending. And so that paying attention to the engine sound was something I was really keying in on and became part of reason why things turned out the way they did, I think. So this is how I've been practicing, making sure I'm trimming out. And you may think that is really crazy to do. And at one point in my life, it felt crazy to do. But now I'm learning that if I have it trimmed right, the plane should just fly. And yeah, I'm still gonna have to make small adjustments. I mean, think about like when you're on, you know, the road and you're driving. No, you're not doing this as you're on the highway. No, you're just making small adjustments. Well, it's the same principle here. Just making small adjustments, a different wind, maybe a little tiny rudder input, little aileron, a little bit more back pressure, a little less, but so my ground speed is still 80 knots and uh, <laughs> literally to be in a car. I mean, you'd be cooking, but it actually go faster than me on the ground. But again, it's not about speed. It's about just enjoying the flying and me getting comfortable and getting the feel in my keister, in my hands, the engine, all of that kind of stuff. Just dialing that in. And as you can see, I haven't kept this where it needs to be. It needs to be like, Russ, 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 Russ. <laughs> uh, I hope he's doing well. Great instructor. All right, so I'm just making my way. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the cameras off, save some battery power, save some time. And uh, I'll be back with you. So, still got some flying to do, about 120 nautical miles uh, southeast of the field. And um, so, got some time. So, we'll be back in a jiffy. All right. And as you can hear and you see me turn the cameras off, I have another 120 nautical miles to fly. I am making maybe 80, 75 to 80 knots ground speed. I fly for another hour and that's when things go south really quickly. And I am kind of happy that the cameras are off, but I wish they were on so you could actually see what happened. So I could actually see what happened. But this is the next thing that happens after all of the stuff goes down and I'm gonna explain it all. So please keep watching, it's not over yet. Again, this is not clickbait. Okay, so I gotta tell you, God is good. All right, so right now I am at Penn Valley Airport. Um, I'll throw the video up there when I flew here before, which is crazy. It's just funny how things go full circle, but you saw that I was trying to, trying to go to St. Mary's and I literally had to make an emergency landing. So Squawk 7700, um, Harrisburg Approach saw me, the Penn Valley guys came out and I'm safely on the ground. So yeah, I um, my training kicked in and uh, I got it on the ground and uh yeah it was the engine is just not making it just stopped making a lot of power and got weird on me so i decided that you know i was gonna bail because out there's a bunch of mountains a bunch of trees so i'll give you the 411 afterwards but i am kind of shaky but uh the lord has got me down here safely so that's it for now so <laughs> whoo lord have mercy thank you for the training thank you lord for getting me down on the ground safe thank you all right so i'm gonna call doylestown and see where i go from here and i'll give you the report later all right so i know this video is getting much longer than i would like and it's gonna be a little longer but i want to make sure i get everything documented in this video so um doylestown end up coming 
to me and to pick me up in this airplane um and they came to Sullivan's Grove and you can see I put my bag in the in the front and then um we flew back to Doylestown um in this twin and um I guess under normal circumstances I probably would have been in awe and it was you know kind of amazing to go from a 152 to this absolute beast of an airplane I mean I just it had like these twin you know turbos it's naturally aspirated but it was turbo um well not naturally as well it had turbo boosters or whatever um and so this plane was cooking but yeah I mean I probably would have enjoyed it more under the circumstances <laughs> so you can see I'm trying to you know you know pretend like I'm enjoying this thing but uh yeah so in the final analysis let me explain to you what happened but I just wanted to show you how I ended up getting back from Sullins Grove to Doylestown all right so let's jump into that what happened so after I turned my cameras off the flight continued as normal for about 30 to 40 minutes or so I had my mixture leaned out I had my power setting to where I wanted to the engine was humming along everything was fine um, I basically was at 4,500 feet um, and I knew that I had to be um, cognizant of the rising terrain as I got closer to St. Mary's I know that the terrain was going to be rising so the elevation there at St. Mary's is 1934 feet pattern altitude is 2934 so I knew pattern altitude was going to be 3000 so it was going to be kind of higher than I'm used to just like when I went to the Poconos and so at 4500 I thought I was fine I always was prepared to go up to 6.5 if I needed to, but I was comfortable at 4.5. Everything was going fine. I noticed, the first thing I noticed was a change in the sound of the engine. And the reason why I knew it was changing is because I was paying so close attention to what the engine was doing because I was trying to make sure I maintained my altitude right at 4,500. One of the things that was suggested to me was to pay attention to what the engine was doing, you know, because then that way you'd be able to tell if the RPMs were going up or down. That would be an indication of whether you were climbing or descending. So I was really honed in to what the engine was doing. All of a sudden, I just heard this uh, sound, like almost like the engine was powering down. And so I'm looking to see what the RPMs are doing. It's not really moving much, but this sound is just different. So my first thought was, well, maybe I'm just going more into a headwind because I had a headwind the whole time. So I really wasn't too concerned about carb icing. But of course, anytime I needed carburetor heat, if I was descending or whatever, I put it on. So that change in the tone of the engine got my attention because once you get past a certain point, you get right about, I say 50 nautical miles outside of St. Mary's, it gets real hilly and real, there's a lot of trees. I mean, there's not a lot going on. And so, and I'm not that high above that elevation at that point. So I know that there's not a lot of room to work with and I got to make some pretty quick decisions in the event that this engine goes out on me. So it powered back up and I continued on, but of course now I'm really paying some attention. It was at that point I thought, well maybe, maybe I am picking up carbide. So as a low time pilot, my expectation is if I pull carburetor heat and there's carb ice that I'm going to hear some engine roughness, there's gonna be a drop in RPMs, all that good stuff that I've been taught. So when I pulled carb heat, none of that happened. And so I thought, huh. So I let it ride for a while, but you know, in a 152, 115 horsepower, um, you pull carb heat, you know, there's a couple extra horses you don't have. And of course, you know, there's a drop in RPM, which, you know, was followed by a little bit of a descent. 
So I'm like, all right, let's turn this car beat off. Let's go. So I thought to myself, huh, I don't know if something's happening. And then right as I'm thinking that I hear this, this kind of like diminishing engine performance again. Now I'm like fully dialed in like, okay, if this engine quits, what am I going to do? Okay, so now my training is telling me, all right, this engine could quit. What are you gonna do if it does? And so I remembered that maybe about 10 nautical miles back, I had passed an airport in Sellings Grove, PA, called Penn Valley Airport, um, Sierra Echo Golf. And, you know, as I have been trained, I always look for, hey, what would happen if the engine goes out here? What happens if the engine goes out here? So I'm kind of loosely doing that, which is kind of interesting, but I just thought to myself, okay, there's a big field over there. Oh, yep, yeah, no trees, mountains, not gonna do that. But I remember that I had passed Sellings Grove because that's the airport that I flew to with my CFI when he asked me to just pick an airport and let's fly to it. Now I actually put that video up there. So I'm immediately kind of thinking these things and I'm thinking, okay, wait, let me give this one more shot because I don't want to have this whole get there itis thing because operationally something is not right. It could just be me. I don't know. Or it could be something with the plane. So I said to myself, all right, let's go ahead and climb. Let's gain some altitude. Let's go up to 6.5. Let's see what happens. So mixture's full rich and I go to power up. I get to about 5,000 feet and then I just noticed that I'm hearing that the engine just sounds like it's underperforming. There's no big rpm swings or anything like that it's just my ear is telling me that something's not right and so as soon as i made that decision rather than just pretend like i'm not hearing it or try to diagnose and figure out what i think is going on i am in an emergency i go into emergency mode and so i immediately break off from my current heading and I start turning back towards Sellens Grove. So the cool thing about Sellens Grove, the elevation there is only 464 feet. So as I turn back off my course, I am now gaining altitude just because the decrease in elevation. That was my plan because that's why I wanted to go there because I knew it was lower. But the other thing is, I remembered that Sellens Grove had a nice, long, wide <laughs> runway. So if I needed to like do a base to final turn in the middle of that runway, at least I would have some asphalt to work with before I either went off the end or whatever. So I have made my decision. I am putting this plane on the ground. I am not gonna pretend like I'm not hearing. I don't know why I'm hearing it. Again, it could be a rookie mistake. I could have carb ice, but it could be something catastrophic that is about to happen. I'm not gonna find out. So I squawk 7,700 because I want folks to know, like, look, if I don't make it, um, I want folks to see that something had happened in the air with an aircraft if I am, you know, after I have to make an off-field landing. And as I do that, then I pick up the frequency for Penn Valley Airport. And the reason why I did that as opposed to doing 121.5 is because I figured if I needed to declare an emergency, I would declare it there and, um, and you know, let anybody who's in the pattern or you know in the field or whatever you know let them know okay so after squawking 7700 i got the frequency for Penn valley airport um put in the frequency because there's only one comm in the uh the aircraft but you know um managed to find a frequency called traffic gave them my tail number and let them know you know please advise any traffic in the area i'm coming in for full stop landing three five experiencing some engine trouble that's the way i characterized it and i'd be coming in for a landing i then called um 
that I was entering the downwind. Now I stayed high. Um, traffic pattern altitude there is uh, 1400. I stayed up about two. Um, and the reason why I decided that is that I just wanted more altitude in the event that as I was doing this kind of semi-normal pattern that I wasn't duped or lulled into this sense of everything is okay. I'm at 14, I do this base and I'm too far away and I come up short. So I did a normal pattern, I just did it higher. I stayed up at two. Um, and as I came in on final, I just dumped a bunch of flaps in, um, slowed the airplane down. And one of the things that's crazy, it was my best landing ever. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, it was a greaser. Uh, so then as I taxied off, these two fantastic gentlemen came out, chalked it in, you know, basically said, hey, you know, <laughs> you gotta make a phone call. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. So um, to get to the end, I ended up having to talk to um, Harrisburg, Fisdo, um, and you know, that was a little nerve wracking. And of course, even now I'm totally second guessing myself about, you know, what did I do? Did I do something wrong? Did I not lean it out enough? You know, should I have kept carb heat on enough? Is there something actually wrong with the airplane? I don't know. All I can say is I think I just I just wanted to make the best decision where I didn't harm myself or anybody on the ground in the event that this engine goes out. And so it was an emergency as far as I was concerned because I had to get on the ground because as far as I was concerned, the engine was going to quit and it was imminent. So um, I learned a lot. I learned that the training really does work. This idea that you're looking for spots to put the plane down in the event that the engine goes out, it was excellent training. You only got one engine, and if it goes out, you're going to come down. Um, but I just, you know, I just thank the Lord for, you know, keeping me, you know, in my mind present to the, you know, conditions to not panic. Um, of course, I felt like I was going to throw up uh, <laughs> some hours later, but, uh, you know, it, it all worked out. So um, in the final analysis, um, I'm going to keep flying. Um, and the reason why I'm going to do that is because, first of all, the good Lord had me. He answered my prayers. He kept the plane in the best working order so that I could at least get on the ground. And he kept my mind right. You know, he kept me, you know, in my right frame of mind to make this landing or and do all the things that I needed to do to, to, to make the landing. And I was actually surprised that I was able to think of all these things like, you know, the descending elevation, you know, Sellens Grove is over there. I'd been there before. They have a nice ride runway. You know, and it had been months since I had been to that field. Um, so I just feel good about the fact that the good Lord kept me, you know, my mind, you know, in the present. Um, but also my training worked. And so it just convinces me that if something happens, I'm going to be able to handle it. Now, you know, there's some things that if it goes down, I may not be able to. But right now I feel more confident, not less, that if there is a real emergency and for me it was a real emergency as far as I was concerned that I would be able to handle troubleshoot and figure it out so I thank you guys for watching this crazy video and um, yeah I am going to fly and I've already put myself on the schedule I want to fly within the next couple days I don't want to wait um, I want to get right back in the cockpit and make this happen so Again, thank you for watching this video. Um, and Russ kid, Russ can fly um, and Russ can handle emergencies. And so <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Peace.